This is episode one of Haste Hobby's Super Fantasy Brawl painting series. This series is geared toward folks who want a simple paint plan to get their board games blingified with all haste. Little thought is given to budgetary considerations in this series, but cheaper alternatives that approximate the same result will be noted and listed in the description below. This episode will cover how to paint Dugrin. Future episodes will tackle the rest of the heroes, the statues, and finally the tokens. I'll note the paint and equipment I'll be using throughout the video, but you can also find a list in the description below. Let's begin. Before painting the figures, I file off the most prominent mold lines with an X-Acto blade, but you could use a file or sanding twigs. The painting plan I'll be using in this series will make any leftover mold lines strikingly visible, so it's important to knock those out. Next, I give the mini a bath in warm soapy water to remove any residual release agent that would prevent our paint from sticking. To avoid handling the model while I paint it, I mount it on something, some holder, with sticky tack. In this case, I'm using a lot of spray paint lids. I apply an even coat of primer so my base colors will stick. Despite owning an airbrush and primers for it, I decided to try using spray paint primers with these minis. I used a light gray for a few and an off-white for the rest. I used Rust-Oleum Chalked Gray and Chiffon Cream. In retrospect, the low pressure Montana Gold spray paints would have reduced the likelihood of overspray obscuring the details. I also added a minor zenithal halo with white acrylic ink through an airbrush, though one could use a spray can for that too. I did obscure a few details by overspraying, in part because I was priming with poor lighting, so be mindful of that. Also use Montana Gold instead, or better yet, an airbrush. If you spray primed your minis, allow them to cure according to the directions detailed on the can of spray paint that you were using. My can said it could take up to five days to cure on plastic, but I only waited 24 hours. For speed and efficiency, I will be using contrast paints. Contrast paints are designed such that when you apply one coat of them, they seep into the crevices and they retract from the edges, giving you three distinct values in one pass. If contrast paint is too rich for your taste, there are other options out there. Two come to mind, Procryl's Transparent Line and Vallejo Game Inks. Neither of these used alone will give you the same effect as contrast paint, but if you do a little more underpainting, you can get a close approximation of the contrast paint look. That underpainting would be one additional step, which would be to apply thinned washes, either a Nuln Oil, an Agrax Earth Shade, a dark tone, a strong tone, to the mini prior to applying your ink or Pro Krill transparent paint. To show you how similarly these look to contrast paints, here are some orcs I painted up for HeroQuest. This is a mixture of orcs painted with contrast paint or Vallejo Game Ink or Pro Krill transparents. You can see that the underpainting provides a lot of the shading that the contrast paint does in one pass. So while the underpainting will add one additional step to the process, it might be cheaper for you. All right, with that summary out of the way, let's begin. Our first order of business is a flesh tone. For this I'm using contrast dark with flesh. I think it is the lightest flesh tone, and all of them kind of tend toward the um, darker side. Anyway, I'll be applying that to the hands, elbows, face, and lip. The lower lip is showing right above the beard. I'm using Apothecary White for the furriness around his elbows, wrists, and on his horn things on the top of his helmet. Now Apothecary White is one of those colors that you can't really get from anywhere else. It is a Citadel Contrast exclusive. There isn't any white ink that works anything like the same way, and there's no you know, parochial, transparent white or anything. So if you're thinking of just getting a few contrast paints, Apothecary White is unique. For Dugrin's big furry coat, 
I'm going to be using Basilicanum Gray and Griff Charger Gray. If you want to skimp out, um, you can just use one color. Basilicanum Gray has more general use than Griff Charger Gray. Griff Charger Gray is not the most interesting contrast paint uh, on the market, for sure, but it has a nice cool blue, and uh, so that's why I'm using it on this guy. This dwarf guy's got a lot of blue tones, as you'll see. I'm doing a little bit of a fade on the coat so that the top, there's a top like triangle of darkness of Basilicanum Gray, and then kind of fades back into the uh, bluish gray. There are crystals sticking out of his back through the coat, and I'm just covering them because it's easier. And I'm going to white them out later to prepare them for a, another color. Here I'm using snake bite leather for the straps on the horns, the little pouch on his hip, and for the wooden section of the shield. The handle with a hammer. And finally for the beard. Before doing the blue for the crystals, I'm going to be using a white to bring up the brightness, the brightness value on some of the sections of the mini. I'll be doing it on the crystals that Dogren is standing on, as well as the crystals on his back and around his shield. Putting on a white before a contrast paint will increase the uh, brightness of the final effect. Here I'm also focusing on placing the white on some of the crystals, I'm just putting the white on the edge. This highlight will show through in the final product as contrast paint is translucent. I also white out the flame coming off of the shield because I want to make that very bright. There's going to be a little white spot in there in the final product. For the crystals themselves, I'll be using a mixture of Talisar Blue and Athermatic Blue. Though really what I'm doing here is thinning the Talisar blue. So one could just use contrast medium instead to thin one of the blues so that it wasn't as saturated. On the crystals I apply a thick coat of paint. For the blue flame, I get some of the paint on my brush and wipe off the excess and then just glaze on some color. I want to create a fade from a lighter to a darker, the darkest being on the tips of the flames. So to achieve that I'll glaze on layers of paint that, does, that don't pool in the recesses. And I'll do more glazes toward the tips of the flame. For the horn, I'm getting much too complicated and doing a blend from Wildwood to Iagoras Dunes to Apothecary White. The darkest being at the tip of the horn and the brightest going to the base of the horn. And I'll be wet blending these colors. So I get a little bit of Wildwood on my brush, apply it to the base or the tip of the horn, then clear that off, void the brush, get some Iagoras Dunes, put that a little bit above the Wildwood, and blend the colors together. And I'll repeat that blending process on the base of the horn with Apothecary White. This is entirely optional. I think Agris Dunes would make a fine horn color. I'm using a dark brown for the boots. For the small part of the tunic that is visible, and for the pants, I'll be using Basilicanum Gray. I'll be using Agra Dunes for the dirt on all the bases for all the minis. and orc flesh for the grass. Before moving on to metallics, I paint the rim of the base black. I like to thin my black paints with some black ink. This makes the paint flow better 
but helps maintain opacity. And I like doing things in one coat. Before moving on to metallics, if you want your metallics to be extra shiny, then you cannot varnish them. If you varnish them, it will reduce their shine. That said, these are models for playing a game, so handling them can cause the paint to wear off. So whether you varnish the model before applying the metallics is entirely up to you. That said, moving on to metallics. I'm using Vallejo Model Air Color Silver metallic paint. And I'll be applying it to all the metals on Dugrin. So the shield, the helmet, the hammer, the bracers, the crotch face, all of it. And any part that I want to be gold, I'll go over with E and in yellow later. That's what I'm doing next. I get out E and in yellow, and I start applying it to all of the parts of Dugrin that I want to be gold. I don't want the yellow to flood into any of the crevices, as that would look strange, and it would disrupt the metallic sheen. So I'm glazing the yellow on. So to do that, I will get some paint on my brush and dab a paper towel before applying it to the mini. With the gold applied, we're almost done. At this stage, the metal looks a bit too bright. It has no shading whatsoever. So to do some quick shading, I'm going to be using Tamiya Panel Line Accent Color. This is an oil paint that's been thinned down to a wash consistency. So you can achieve the same effect just by using some mineral spirits and some oil paint at the right ratio. You'll see that this floods into the recesses very readily. And if it gets anywhere we don't want, we'll be using a Q-tip, moistened with mineral spirit, to gently rub off the excess. If using oil paints and mineral spirits sounds unappealing, a black wash will do much the same thing. But it will dull the metallics a little bit. And lastly are the finishing details. I'm aiming to get a glow effect on the eyes of both the shield and the face, and on the fire, on the hammer. To do that, I'll be whiting out the eyes and the area where the fire meets the hammer, and then I'll apply blues, either glazed on or flooded into the area. Finally, I'll be aiming for a little bit of an object source lighting effect coming from the flame on the hammer by thinning down some athermatic blue and applying it to the fur, hand, and forearm nearest the fire. And that completes Dugrin. If you have thoughts or questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you want to be notified when more of these tutorials go live, hit the subscribe button. And if you want these videos to reach more people, do all the things. Press all the buttons. Okay, until next time, bye-bye.